to know that you're still keeping Compton alive. That's good. I'm doing what I do, Doc. I'm doing what I'm doing. So, so what's it, talk to me. Dusty had a question about Skateland, man. Yeah, yeah. What's up, man? Thank you for joining us again, dude. No problem. Yeah, yeah. So um, Skateland USA, talk to us about Skateland USA. Uh, and um, I know we've done Here's it before, the thing, we have new listeners. Okay, now listen up. When you say Skateland USA, you got to put you got to put the Compton on the end of it. Skateland USA Compton. There, there are go. about 60 Skateland USA's across the country. I didn't know that. We were wow. Skateland USA Compton. Wow. If you say that, we will never have any problems. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Yeah, yeah, tell everybody about, you know, how give us the good, the bad and the ugly about Skateland USA Compton. You know, it's 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 like I it's like I used to tell the parents when we would have parent meetings before we got our permit. We we would have a little we would have some tables in back of the building and we'd have punch and cookies and I'd invite people over and 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 I'd tell them if you're hesitant to send your kids here, don't be. Once they enter these gates, I'm, I'll take care of them. I'm in charge of them. Outside the gate, they're your responsibility. If you pick them up on time, we're never going to have a problem. And, and I think that was the significance was, is the parents never really got, got the grasp on what I was talking about. I had people that lived in a neighborhood that never been there because mm. they were afraid of the gangs. Mm. And that, that was the bad part is there was, but you know, if you saw streets of Compton, uh, they did a report and some graphics. And I think there were like 28 known street gangs in that general perimeter of Compton, South LA and Long Beach. I mean, it was, there was a lot of gang activity going on. So for us, and Lazul, Lazul t attests to this, it was a constant battle dealing with these hard sets. And But we got pretty good at it. We, we got real good at it. Yeah, it takes a little, takes a little doing, though. It ain't for the faint of heart. That's for damn sure. Yeah. It's expensive. Yeah. It's expensive dealing with these gangsters. You got to bring a lot of people on. Not, not, that, you, not that you anticipate trouble. But if there is some, you got to be able to deal with it. Right. You ain't got time to make no phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> There's no time to make phone calls when it's about to go down, okay? And yeah, if you do, you they ain't talk, coming. You can't talk to the attractive young girls when they put the arm, arm around you. No. No, no way. Well, let me, yeah. um, let me ask you. In Lonzo's uh, Eve After Dark documentary, he was asked a question. He was asked, what was the number one problem that you had or who gave you the biggest problem? And Lonzo's uh, answer was the police, the police always harassing him and, you know, messing with him. Um, what was your experience like at Skateland um, with, the, with the local well, police officers? My, my situation was a little bit different because when I went to planning commission to get my permit, uh, they required me to hire off-duty police officers. So where, where I would get, I would get security, local security guys from the neighborhood, you know, for eight, 10, $12. I was hiring cops for 18 to $24. So my cost doubled. And I can't say they were really worth the money because when something would go down, the first thing they would do is come over and get me and say, Hey, there's some shit going down there, but you better get your guys on it. And then they would kind of back off. It's like they would, they wanted to sit at the metal detector, which we were required to have by the planning commission, a regular airport style metal detector, which I had to send my people out to get trained on it. And I think Alonzo ended up with that metal detector. I've never saw it again after I closed. Anyway. But um, we did that. We we did that for quite a while with comps and police, and then I finally realized I can hire twice as many guys for what I'm paying at, and, and I I cut the contract 
and modified my permit. That's that was that was the deal. Yeah, that was a that was a different time. Yeah. Were there times? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, Dusty. No, go ahead, Dusty. I'm good. I'm good. Oh, okay. Were there times that that unfortunately, you know, I know you have metal detectors and you tried your best to keep things out, but were there times that unfortunately, you know, things got in like weapons? No, we never had any. We we only had one. We only had one incident with a firearm inside. We used to we used to pick up. We used to put, pick up a couple shoe boxes full of surgical scissors, razor knives knives, ice picks, a lot of ice picks. The girl, the girls had most of the stuff in their purse. Yep. You know, a guy was hit the front door and he see this big sign, metal detector, you know, no firearms. They, they, they'd flatter, turn around, and go back to their car. But, but the one shooting we had inside was, a, uh, I think it was, uh, Nick's master spades crew came in mm -hmm. and one of his guys had a 22 in his, in his, uh, sock look, Saturday night special. And it went off and shot him in the leg. Oh, he, he wait, and his gun shot him. Yeah. He shot himself. Wow. Okay. Pulling it out. And then they come running into me, Craig, Craig. So, so his name is so and so is shot. I said, How did that happen? Well, he had a gun. You got to call an ambulance. You got to call an ambulance. And I said, No, no, no. You got to put him in the car and drop him off in front of Martin Luther King. That's what you got to do. <laughs> I cannot have that on my report right. on Monday morning when it goes to the police chief. Right. It does. I couldn't do that. They'd, they'd close. They'd have closed me down for two weeks. Right. See, people don't understand when, it, when there's a situation that happened after that happens at any venue. There's a, a police report, and there's a um, it goes on your uh, annual report. And if you have something yeah. like that, and all that stuff adds up at the end of the year. Come time for perm permit again, all that stuff will bite you in the ass. Yeah, and and they'll, they'll call you. They'll bring you in for p permit renewal. Yep. And uh, and deny it for a week or two weeks. Yep. You know until you until you've told them I've remediated all that stuff. Yep. So, so we couldn't have that. Yep. That's very true. That's very true. Yeah. Well, have, listen, it's good talking with you guys. Always, it's Greg. Always, here. man. Everything else good with you? All right, we're Thank good. You. If you get if you have a question about Skateland on these shows, give me a call. You, you know, got I'll it. Pick it up. You got it. All right, dude. Yeah, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Doc. Bye. All right. My man Craig from Skateland, craziest white that's man in comedy. Right yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yep, that's how we do it, folks, right craziest here. White craziest, craziest white, white, white man, man in Compton. Compton. That's what he said. You gonna do what in Compton on pa off of pa room? You got to be crazy. Well, I you know he but he made it happen, man. I think he did it for like six years, five, six years. Something like that. It wasn't. It was. It was a nice little run. It was a nice little run, and it, it wasn't like he was shut down. He's like, you know what? It's time to roll on. Craig. Craig was always been. A, he's a real estate man. He's a real estate businessman. You know, okay, I got it over here. I got my. I get my money out of this now. Let's make it happen. Next.